Hi and welcome to Charlotte Talks Transformers, where we'll be taking a look at Transformers Animated Season 2, Episode 7, A Fistful of Energon. Uh, okay, on initial viewing, like at the very beginning of the episode, didn't expect a whole lot. It was kind of, um, kind of a little low key. I didn't really know where it was going. And then plot, like plot, plot here, plot there, characters showing up, like Starscream, Megatron, this and that, like, whoa, man, I was not expecting that. I kind of thought this was going to be like a low key boring episode, anything but... But it kind of, uh, it starts off on the Dinobot Island for no real particular reason, just to introduce the fact that um, EMP stasis cuffs exist. So Bulkhead and, <laughs> Bulkhead, okay, who has not given up his oil habit, I noticed. He was sitting there on the island and he had like a, a glass full of oil and everything. I'm like, hmm. So in this episode, it looks like two characters are struggling with addiction. But anyways, so uh, they're on Dinobot Island and it turns out Grimlock is doing a bit of rampaging, but he's not really rampaging. He just has a thorn in his foot. And so Prowl ends up um, like EMPing him a little bit and then getting rid of the thorn. And uh, I don't know, there, there just wasn't much to that, that little section. It was kind of pointless. But immediately after, uh, we realized that Starscream has escaped from uh, I guess Autobot commands, you know, Ultra Magnus's ship and all that. Uh, it seems like they're very inept at keeping Decepticons prisoners because he just, I don't know where Starscream is getting his resources, okay? There's a number of things in this episode where I was thinking, I'm like, how's Starscream accomplishing this? Like, where's his, where's his resources, man? Like, he should have no resources to accomplish anything, but I'm just jumping ahead. Fucking clones, man. Starscream's got a lot of clones. Starscream escaped from a probably heavily fortified ship and he's managing to just go all over the place and do everything and no one can find him. It's like, where? who's funding this guy? I don't know who's funding Starscream, but someone has it out for Megatron because they, they want Starscream to have fucking clones, man. If you have all these resources and the Autobots can't figure out how he gets the resources, how the hell did Decepticons lose the war? Right? That's kind of weird. Well, there wasn't a lot of like figuring out where the reason. Thanks, Bass. Thanks, cat. That, that kind of hurt my ears. What an, what an asshole. I've got two cats and they're both assholes. Not me. Yeah. So, um, this episode kind of really kicks off where they get a, an AllSpark energy signature coming from the moon. And so Prowl, in a odd bit of like, real dumbassery decides we, you and me bulkhead, should go to the moon on Teletran 1's little shuttle ship and capture Starscream all by herself. And I'm just like, no, Prowl, you were the smart one. You're supposed to be better than this. But no, 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 bulkhead is the voice of reason. Bulkhead's like, no, 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 that's a terrible idea. Two of us can't take on Starscream alone. We know Starscream and Prowl's all like, okay, okay, sure. So then Bulkhead wanders off and then Prowl just freaking steals the shuttle and goes to the moon. And I'm like, what? No, like th that's kind of out of character in my opinion. Like as of right now, Prowl has established himself as being the voice of reason, the one that doesn't take unnecessary risks, stuff like that, right? Really? Maybe. Actually, kind of looking back, he, he has had his moments where he hasn't really like a uh, meshed with the team and kind of went off to do his lone wolf stuff, but I don't know. To me, that was a little odd. I guess he figured it was a calculated risk going to the moon and he could, he could do it with, with uh, Ratchet's EMP thing. Well, because they were establishing him this episode as being like a, a bit of a hothead, almost like a Bumblebee-esque type figure who was not in this episode, by the way. Sorry, I'm Bumblebee. Nowhere to be seen. They went off to some sort of like amusement parks that I think was supposed to be like a, a Six Flags or something like that. They called it, a, I don't know, a five something. Never mind, it's not important. Prowl is a hothead this episode. So Prowl gets to the moon and finds Starscream, but then out of freaking nowhere, walk down. And I'm like, where the hell did you come from, buddy? And next thing you know, Prowl and Lockdown are like teamed up and they're like bantering back and forth like they've known each other their whole lives and calling each other partner and shit. And I'm all like, what? Like, I kind of liked it though. 
Like, I honestly feel like uh, this whole lockdown prowl partnership thing was much more interesting than a lot of the stuff that we've seen thus far, and I kind of want to see more of it. But Starscream escapes, and so Lockdown goes and takes his ship and heads to Earth, and Prowl hitches a ride, and then somehow ends up in Lockdown's ship, and he's all like, you know, like, posing like this, like, hey, partner, or like, let's team up, da 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 right? Like, and so... Lockdown offers Prowl some like pretty sick mods, and so now Prowl kind of looks like um, uh, what do you call it? like a, a bit of a samurai warrior because of all his mods and stuff. Bay Farmers Drift. Very Bay Farmers Drift. Like, that's probably where they got the inspiration for Bay Farmers Drift. Is not IDW Drift, but Prowl because I don't know. I'm gonna go into a bit of a tangent that has nothing to do with Transformers Prime, but I fucking hate Bayformers so much. Um, drift is not the drift we saw in freaking Bayformers, man. Like that drift, yeah, okay, sure, he has some maybe Japanese aesthetic if you squint a little bit. Like when they introduced Drift for the first time, yeah, there was some cherry blossoms, okay. And then freaking Bayformers, Michael Bay's like, oh yeah, he fights with a sword. He's totally gonna be Ken Watanabe, like every stereotypical samurai motherfucker you ever saw. I hated it. It was so not Drift. It was very Prowl though. Um, I'm sorry you had to hear that. I'm sorry you had to listen to my, my little rant, but- Don't make me silence you. <sighs> Ah, you have no idea. I, I love Drift. I love Drift so much. And I equally love Prowl. I hated Bayformer's Drift. That wasn't Drift. It sh they really should have called him Prowl. That would have made a lot more sense to me because Prowl is, in fact, trained by Yokotron, who is very Japanese-y, and it just it would have made a lot more sense, but it felt like Drift was the hot thing to do at the time. And so they basically, like, meshed Prowl and Drift into... Uh, you know what, I'm going off on a tangent. You guys don't even want to hear this. But, okay, so Prowl gets his mods and he becomes oddly obsessed with modding. He like, I don't know, it's almost like a cocaine addiction, you know? Like, he gets to Earth and everything like that. Um, there's, you know, a, a bit of battle in this and that and Lockdown ends up capturing Starscream, who is unusually cowardly and takes him off. And so Prowl reunites with the Autobots and Ratchet is all like, Oh, you're doing all your modding and your upgrades, and I'm like, so is this the uh, the Cybertronian version of like drugs? You know, it's like or <laughs> like in Futurama where Bender is jacking on. <laughs> Shut up, baby! I know it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great episode, jacking on. But it kind of felt like it was uh, sort of like, oh no, Prowl's got himself into modding, and then Prowl starts to be like oh, you can be bigger and better and like do amazing things with mods. But so Megatron ends up showing up on Earth and then there's like a bit of a Mexican standoff where everyone comes together. There's, um... Has the Fistful of Dollars reference. Yeah, right? Yeah, Fistful of Energon, Fistful of Dollars. I guess that's, uh, I've never seen the movie, so I don't really, I, I can't actually comment on any of the, the references that there may or may not have been. All I know is that there was a bit of a Mexican standoff, but not really. It was kind of still two-sided. A Mexican standoff is like where everyone's pointing guns at everyone else, I think. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm uneducated in this. But, um, so as of right now, we are in a warehouse. There is two star screams. One seems like a bit of a swindler. One seems like a bit of a coward. Uh, we have... Uh, the Autobots consisting of Prowl, Optimus Prime, uh, Bulkhead, and Ratchet, and we have, you know, all of the Decepticons and Lockdown. Did I get everyone? I think I got everyone. So everyone's Mexican standing off, and everyone's like, okay, wait, there's two Scar- ah, there's two Starscream something, something weird's going on here. And then, um, you know, battle, 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 uh, and no, 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 wait, there wasn't a battle. Uh, Starscream ends up shutting down the two clones and like I guess he rigged them to blow up and so Megatron was like well let's get the hell out of here and the lockdown was like oh I'm also getting the hell out of here and Optimus Prime was like uh, no these these guys could take out half of Detroit as per usual so we got to do something and so Prowl like rejects his mods and 
puts his mods on the clones and sends them up into the sky and then I guess they blow up in the sky and oh my god it was a mess <laughs> but um, at the end, at the end of everything, strangely enough, a lot of this stuff, it was very inconsequential. Like, a lot of stuff happened, but it didn't feel like it had a lot of lasting consequences except for what happened at the end. But after the battle was all said and done, uh, Lockdown goes and, like, private messages Prowl and everything, and he's all like, you know what, about this whole partners thing, I think, like, we can make a great team where... Uh, we're a lot alike, this and that, you know, the usual spiel, and I'm just kind of like, yeah, yeah, that's awesome, let's do that, like, let's have Problem Lockdown going off together into space to do, like, a bounty hunting, like, I don't know, I would watch that show, that intrigued me in a very odd way, because I'm like, yeah, like, weird modding, obsessed, like, Prowl, and then Lockdown, who's all, like, evil and shit like that, uh, maybe I ship it, I don't know, I don't know. But it's you're amazing. About, all you're talking about modding is you want to play Skyrim. <laughs> modding a Skyrim is very fun. But, um, yeah, where do we go from here? Uh, actually, that was kind of, that was the end of the episode, except for a brief moment where you see Starscream, and he's in, like, maybe a ship or something. It's cat hair all over here. He's in a bit of a ship or something, and he's all like, oh, my clones, blah, 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 blah. But luckily I have like a million more, and then it kind of like pans out. And you see he's got like just a ton of clones just waiting to go, right? And okay, what is it with Starscream and clones? Because I've noticed this. In Transformers Prime, Starscream gets some clones. Transformers Animated, Starscream gets some clones. I don't know if he gets some clones elsewhere, but it seems like Starscream and clones is like a thing. When... I don't want clones of Starscream. I don't care about clones of Starscream. I want Thundercracker and Skywarp. That's what I want. And no one is delivering on that. Like, come on, man. That's great. Like, get the command trying together. I don't know. Like, the only one that seemed to do it was IDW. And then they split them up. And it's like, why can't we just have, like, our three Seekers just fucking tearing shit up? I don't know. Like, it's something that's peeved me for a little while. They keep wanting to make more Starscreams, because I guess Starscream's like a fan favorite. But it's like, you've got a perfectly good Thundercracker and a perfectly good Skywarp. Fucking use them, man. Like, you have the license for them, I would assume. But, um, it's a minor peeve. Uh, so, yeah, Starscream clones are a thing, again. And, um, yeah, bodes ill for the future. There was a weird moment where... Uh, Ultra Magnus was sending a message to Earth just being like, oops, we kind of lost Starscream and uh, I guess we can't really chase after him because our Tachyon whatever whatever is missing from, you'll remember that one episode. And then Megatron's just listening in and then he just makes a snarky comment like, haha, wonder what could have happened to that kind of. And it's just like, how are you receiving this frequency? Does no one encrypt anything in this world? I don't know. There's a lot of ineptitude of going on. Something I did want to mention though. Oh, two things I want to mention. One, uh, something about the mouth flapping. It was freaking weird this episode. I don't know what it was, but it seemed like a lot of characters were like, just doing like odd jerky motions with their mouths. I found it really distracting this episode. I don't know if like their budget suddenly went down or something like that. It didn't seem like it. But then at the same time that the mouth animations was super whack, their skies were amazing. Like when they were out in space, like they had all this like, you know, stars and constellations and you could see like a, what looked like nebulas. It was gorgeous. Um, so that was beautiful. I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, nothing else to say, nothing else to add. Do you have anything to add? I, I got nothing else. He's yawning, so no. <laughs> <laughs> nothing else to add he's like shut up bitch just get this over with i want to eat um so yeah he knows me so well <laughs> i know i've got dinner waiting for me but uh yeah that's all totally watch this episode um please leave a comment subscribe would love to hear from you and until next time goodbye